Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. This is the best moments of 2020, uh, 22, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> part two. Part, these are the best it's moments. a lot of twos. Yeah, the best moments of 2022, part two. We just had so many good moments of the year that we couldn't fit it into one episode. So we had to make this into two parts. Uh, I'm going to tell you about some of them that we didn't get to the last episode with my friend and podcast husband, Dax Holt. How are you, sir? Oh, it, good. How that, about you? Is that we say podcast? No, no, no. This is my podcast yeah, you, co-host. No, I we are work husbands at this point. It is. It's <laughs> dude. <laughs> if, I don't know you guys. We've had And you never put out, which is the weird part. I know. What a journey we've had. <laughs> this podcast thing, it's a hustle, dude. I'm sorry, I, it is I'm awesome. to work into this. And but you know what? You guys are appreciated because the only thing we do is we ask you guys to leave reviews for us. And you guys have been doing that, and we appreciate it so much because A, it's good feedback for us, and B, it helps us out with the algorithms. So um, we're actually – we always like to review uh, – read your reviews um, on the show because it's a way of just kind of giving you credit where credit's due and giving you little plugs when you're in the car and they, we say your name in the car or wherever you listen to the podcast. It's, it's just cool. Dax, you have some reviews ready? I've got some. All right, this one comes from – Crusher Candy. It says, Bed po best podcast out there. Your shows are the best in the office or in the car. It's a great content to listen to. Don't worry. It's a private office, so cussing isn't a fear. Absolutely love the Friday Raw Rundown shows. Way to end the week. I love it from Crusher Candy. Five star. Thank you, Crusher Candy. Thank you. That's so funny. You know what's hilarious is the Raw Rundowns, were, when we started those off, it was just like, oh, you know, we want to get some like more current stuff because our all of our interviews are very like evergreen. You don't need they're not timely. You can like listen to them whenever and they're still cool. The raw rundowns was something just because we felt like people would enjoy that. And they have become almost as popular as our, our Wednesday episodes, which is wild to me. Yeah. But I'm glad you guys like them. OK, next is whoa, that's a lot of reading. OK. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from chronic brianna five stars one of my favorite new finds i first heard dax and adam on dana wilkie's podcast yes the dana wilkie of the twenty five thousand dollars sunglasses on real housewives of beverly hills infamy and i found myself really compelled by their dynamic so i decided to check out the hollywood raw what i love about this pod is how they deliver short and long form content each week through their fast paced and easily digestible raw rundowns uh, where they break down the most interesting pop culture stories in the news and uh, their longer form interviews with celebs and stars of all varying grades of fame, as well as their deep dive analysis and conspiracies. Keep up the great work, gentlemen. I very much appreciate your direct and informative approach that doesn't get dampened by all the bells and whistles and gimmicks from the podcast in this arena seem to rely on a plus. Damn, Brianna, how much do we have to Venmo you for that <laughs> for that review? <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. That's if I write a book, I think you're gonna have to do the forward to my book because that was really. Uh, <laughs> All right, let me find one that's a little shorter so we can get uh, going on this. This one looks a little shorter. Okay, uh, Liesel, five, oh, four stars. Why four stars? How did I even screen grab this? This is blasphemy. All right. Four stars. Great podcast. I guess Trevor Noah based his Will Smith, quote unquote, interview techniques on Oprah's No Questions Asked Kowto interview of Harry and Meghan. Love your podcast so much. Fun to listen to. Well, Liesl, if you really love our podcast, you'll go back and give us five stars. All right. Yeah, Thank you guys for that so much. I really appreciate it a little bit. What is it? No, that was that was interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's get into it. We've got a whole part two of the best of 2022. Uh, let's just honestly jump right back in. On to another friend of the show, Dante Greco. Dante is a journalist who's been – he's just got this iconic voice, and he's just so fun and funny on the podcast, and he's been around for so long that he was able to be part of some of the biggest stories that happened in the last decade, one of them being uh, Kobe Bryant's helicopter accident. And Dante was mm -hmm. the first guy on the scene – of the Kobe 
Brian Crash. Let's hear what he has to yeah. say about it. I was the only camera guy on that morning. It was a Sunday. And I remember I was outside the SLS Hotel in West Hollywood trying to get Tiffany Haddish or something like that. And they called and they said, listen, we need you to head out to Calabasas. You need to like hike up this mountain and find this air, this helicopter wreckage. And it wasn't known yet that Kobe had died or that he was involved. So I'm driving out there like, okay, well, you know, maybe, you know, it's helicopter owned by Kobe Bryant. Maybe he lent it out to somebody like Kobe's not going to die in a helicopter accident. But as I was driving out there, I got the TMZ app alert saying Kobe Bryant dead helicopter. And I was just like, wow. And, but then you have to, cause I grew up in LA. I used to live down the hill from Kobe. I would see him teaching his wife how to drive his Ferrari and like see him at Panda Express and stuff. And I'm a big Laker fan. So you have to process all of that, but then get to the scene and try to get in. You know, the cops are trying to stop everybody from getting close to the accident scene. Got to run through some neighborhoods and other people were showing up in their Lakers gear and whatnot. But yeah, I, I wasn't able, fortunately, to get too close to the accident because I really didn't want to. But from the street, it was just up this kind of small hill in Calabasas. You could see the smoking wreckage and, you know, it was just shocking. Wow. I, I can't imagine, dude. That is such a moment seared into your brain for the rest of time. Being there on one of the most shocking, like the scenes of most shocking deaths in the last decade um wow crazy to be that okay i i know someone that i had worked on getting for a very very long time this was a photographer who is really well known in the industry clint brewer um and i think i started talking to him maybe a year ago about wanting to have him on the podcast because he's had some of the most like iconic shots he's you, you just see his name everywhere and we had a relationship from when i was working at tmz back in the day and then i think that in all honesty i think he was a little nervous to come on um because some of these guys they've never spoken publicly about their job or they're worried about you know some kind of backlash from fans because in the streets i think a lot of photographers get a bad rap and we're like that's not us we are not we love a lot of the things, you know, that these these guys are doing. And I think that we talk to good guys. We're not talking to the ones who are being super creepy or the ones that are treating celebs like crap. I feel like we genuinely bring on nice guys um, and just want to hear their perspectives of their their job. And Clint Brewer did not let us down. He came on and you remember he had one of the most famous photos of the year, which was the confirmation of Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles being together. They were at a wedding. Where was that wedding? Was Santa Barbara or Montecito or Somewhere something? Yeah. Yeah. And he was the one that him and a, what his partner basically shot these photos of them holding hands, walking around. Uh, but we'll let you tell. We'll let him tell that story because it's better coming out of his mouth. We did have some kind of like whispers that she was dating someone but this what we got told was that she was dating another female mm. well okay it doesn't really make sense well, okay whatever so we were working and my, my partner spotted her it's like she's with another woman and i'm like oh okay well you know the story starts to progress she goes to a, a hotel and uh we're kind of trying to work out what to do. And we're sitting in the car and I'm like, that sounds like Harry Styles. And as I said it, like the guy I work with is like, don't look, there's Harry Styles behind you. And I'm like, we kind of trained now where, you know, like everyone else would swing their neck around. This doesn't happen. So I'm like, okay. So he's walking straight past us. I'm like, shit, that was him. <laughs> so we start, you know, and he, he doesn't like being photographed at all he hates it yeah but he's relaxed he has like a drink of uh, i don't know it's whiskey or something he's in like one of those tumbler glasses and um i start taking pictures and he's in a robe and there's this like couple doing wedding pictures and he goes and poses with him we start taking pictures i was like wow that's a nice guy like he's just like randomly taking pictures with someone 
We didn't know that that was his manager. We had no idea. So he goes off, gets into his room, and we knew that um, Olivia was there too. So we start making a few phone calls. And I was like, yeah, there's a rumor that they're together. I'm like, Bullshit. Sure, 10 minutes later, they come walking down the road, and that's the pictures you see. I was like, holy shit. Such a fascinating guy. I love it. And honestly, uh, this is one of those episodes that this was a moment from it, but there are so many more good gems that I highly recommend you go back and you listen to Clint or Jesse, Dante, Bobby, like all of them have amazing, amazing stories that they've told. And this is just the tip of the iceberg on every single one of those episodes. Yeah, I would highly, you know, when we do one of these type of episodes, I would check them out because they're some of our most favorite episodes because they're just real and they're fun and it's this is like some of the episodes where that we humanize the industry and reveal the fourth wall because extra access hollywood they don't talk about this stuff this is the stuff instead they buy their clips and make up their own narrative but we're actually hearing what actually went on from the scene of where it went down um all right now on to someone who we had on our podcast that told us a story that was probably like the biggest blind item of all time you know? <laughs> and it's not even yep. a blind item because it's true but we have it's like a guessing game and we still haven't been able to really figure it out now we have our own guesses but we had stratus morfogan stratus morfogan was um a restaurateur who has made the the biggest hot spots in new york city and he told us a story about some celebrity couple that had sex in the VIP room of his restaurant, and he had it on camera. And he wouldn't tell us the names, but he could have did a lot of damage with this video, and uh, or a lot of, I wouldn't even say damage. He could have helped out a lot of people because I mean it was, I mean a lot of people were like, oh my god. I mean this would have, this would have been a huge story, yes. and he turned down a million bucks for it. Um, but uh, his depiction of it is pretty great. You know when I opened up fully chow. I had just gotten married and I'm in Mykonos for my honeymoon and I get a call from uh, in, in the inquirer. They said, we're offering you a million dollars for the tape of this. I still will never mention his name, but you might figure it out. This hip hop magnet having sex on the table with a Hollywood starlet. And we know you have the video. And I said, only video I could have was from the security cameras. So I'm in Greece and I call my GM. And I said, go on the security cameras. And he's like, oh yeah. They were, they were having dinner last night in the private room. I said, go back and tell me what you see. And he's like, Eddie has like a real heavy accent. He's like, Mr. Wolfogan, I, I, I can't even look at this. They're, they're, they're having sex on the table. I said, Eddie, <laughs> do me a favor. Uh, totally delete it and wi wipe it off the server. Because you know what? For a million dollars, I'm not doing it. And, and at the end of the day, they offered me a million dollars for that tape. And it was like hip hop and Hollywood royalty. And I, that's where I draw the line. I love Stratus. He was so good. Probably one of the most talked about episodes of the year for us. But another, I think one of our top episodes that people really flocked to was Jennifer Ciotta. And she was the um, private jet flight attendant who came on to dish about celebrities being on the flight, the things that she's gone through over the years. And I know it's going to sound stupid because she dished all kinds about celebs and who's been on her flights but the most interesting thing to me was you associate private jets with money and like champagne and caviar and she revealed what people it like the number one thing people order to have on their private jets and it's something you probably wouldn't expect so this is what she said with the catering passengers and owners understand the catering. So they'll like flip it about the catering. They're like, why is this shrimp so much? You know, occasionally you don't get that a lot, but occasionally you get that. But the funny part is they're dropping $120,000 on their fuel bill, but they're not saying a word about that, but they're flipping out on shrimp that costs $400. So it always makes me laugh when they do that. I just find that hilarious. Hilarious, dude. I mean, I like it. Like peanut butter and jelly. I'd get peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> If you're flying private, I think you can afford more than peanut butter and jelly. You're not in college anymore. I think you get, you know, you know, you can. Have but sometimes it's that's what it is. It's a combination of like rich people shit, and then I just want my basic home peanut butter and jelly because a really good peanut butter and jelly is probably one of the most delicious things on the planet. Yeah, um, like soft white bread with like peanut, a thick peanut butter, a lot of jelly. Hell yeah, sign me up. 
Um, our next uh, person I want to talk about is someone who came on the podcast. I reached out to because I just feel like they had a lot of stories, and they did, and they told them a lot of them when they came on the podcast. And this person, Damien Fehe, um, Damien was an MTV VJ. He's now a writer on Family Guy. But there was a documentary that came out this year about Woodstock, and Damien was – you know, they're doing it. So I wanted to hear some experiences about Woodstock, but also experiences from MTV. Um, Cause here's a guy who's met a lot of people, but you know, I remember going to TRL and Damien was the host and now it was kind of cool. Cause the tables turned a little bit where I'm interviewing the mm -hmm. host and he got to reflect a little bit on this cool times at MTV. And he had um, a great story. Well, you know, you know, yeah, I wanna, we'll do the Madonna story, but I think with him, he was living our dream life. Oh, and I think that was the thing that we talked to him about is like when we were growing up and we we're in high school and we would turn on the TV getting home at like three o'clock when TRL was on. And it was like him and Carson Daly were like our idols back then. Like that was the job I wanted more than any job on the planet. Yeah. No, and they, I never like if you would have was... asked me back then, you'll get a moment to talk to Damien Fahey. I would have never believed you. And so that was the cool part was we are getting that moment to talk to someone that I was, you know, in, I, I don't want to say infatuated with. That's a weird word. But I was starstruck by back in the day. And so listening to him talk was really cool. But yes, let's get into the Madonna story you brought up. He had a really interesting exchange when Madonna refused to do an interview with him. So here that is. She was very particular about who interviewed her. She, Carson has to be Carson. And then she came and like, well, we don't have Carson. And she's like, well, it has to be um, uh, John Norris. It's either Carson or John Norris, no one else. And, uh, or, you know, I'm leaving. So like, we have, we have Damien, our new VJ. Uh, and she's like, who? I knew this. They, there were, they, my producers told me that this had happened. And so they said, you have to go. We want you to go in. She's, she's might not do the show. We want you to go into her dressing room by yourself, knock on the door, go in by yourself, introduce yourself. And like, razzle dazzle madonna you know with like your your electric personality and uh <laughs> i was shitting my pants you know i did it i remember saying before i opened the door i was like i could go in there and be like some insane like false version of myself uh or i said i could be like i could tell her how i'm how i'm fucking scared shitless and i was rambling on and on and on and so uh she stopped me and she was just like she was holding a champagne flute and uh, uh, full of champagne. And um, she stopped me and she goes, uh, hey, whoa, 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 come down, come down. She's like, um, I'm nervous too. And that's, that's why I'm drinking. That's why I'm drinking this. And she goes, do you want a glass? And I go, uh, what is that champagne? She goes, yeah. Uh, she goes, let me get you a glass of champagne. Let's, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta calm you down a little bit. I like chug the glass of champagne backstage with Madonna. Um, and so that was it. And then the interview, and I was still nervous in the interview. And if you watch the video, there's, um, you know, we, we held note cards that had questions on them. And so I have a mic in one hand, note cards in the other. And as the interview starts, my hand starts to shake a little bit. <laughs> so I grab it and I put the note card under my, under my armpit. And, and you can see on, it's on YouTube. It's on, but it's like, it's like me kind of like, literally the reason I put, I'm like, well, it won't shake if it's under my armpit. And then I pulled it out and it was like, this, you know, and then it was, was kind of wet, like, a, like, you know, wet. <laughs> <laughs> Damien also had like stories about how Carson Daly really helped him because he didn't even know what he was doing when it came to negotiating his contract. So like as much as we thought he was on top of the world, financially he was getting paid. It was fine money, but it wasn't like like oh my god money. And so I think it's interesting to hear him talk about how Carson Daly kind of helped him out and said, "Listen, let me take you out for a drink." I'm going to tell you what you should do when it comes to negotiation. It was also interesting to hear that he doesn't really have a relationship with Carson anymore. And I just feel like if you kind of did a job like that together and you're just during that time, I'm kind of surprised that they don't have a relationship anymore. But, um, but it made it sound like that's not like, it, not like a bad thing. Like they didn't fall out. They just, they're, they're not like close anymore. They don't, you know, text each other on the weekends. Yeah, no, it wasn't a falling out, but I'm just surprised where, I don't know that you guys don't really communicate anymore. But again, you're in different parts of your life. So you also live on different parts of the country. Things get tough, but just to hear the stories that Damien had, it was just amazing. I, Wendy Williams had a big year. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say a big year. She had a very low year. Uh, she had a um, rough year. A highly publicized year. How about that? I would say that. I would say she had a very hub a highly publicized year. Um, it didn't go in the direction that 
we all thought it was going to go. Um, you know, good news is it seems like she's doing better. But we talked to someone who basically was the head anchor of all of it. She's the one who broke all the Wendy Williams story, Jessica Finn, who uh, we worked with at TMZ. She's been uh, – she's now at the U.S. Sun and crushes it. I mean, Jessica is a hardcore – entertainment journalist and like breaks the biggest stories weekly it's pretty amazing what, what jess does i'm like man yeah. jess is like a pit bull when it comes to entertainment news but jessica kind of breaks down to us everything that's going on with wendy williams and not only that she broke down everything and then let us in on one of the biggest stories about wendy williams that wasn't even out there like had never gotten published that had our jaws on the ground all right let's check out what she said We've kind of owned a big corner of the Wendy Williams market. Like I know that, you know, a ton of people are breaking things out there, but the sourcing that I've had has gone so deep into Wendy's circle and people that like the amount of stories that I've been able to break are so deep in Wendy's circle. It's, it's really mind boggling. I uh, was able to print a story about Wendy inebriated taping during COVID in her apartment and things just went absolutely haywire. And at one point she was naked and I- mastur- Wait, what? <laughs> at one point she was naked, she was masturbating. There was parts of the story I didn't even include because it was such a crazy wild story that my boss found it to be too lewd. Um, but yeah, I mean, there. I wait, wait, wait. So Wendy was naked filming her show and masturbating? It was, it was, it was a filming day and this was, during 2020, this is the spring part portion of the COVID season of 2020 Wendy Williams, where we kept seeing her really seemingly slurring on air. Exactly. She didn't seem to be, you know, with it generally. And uh, this was the this was after that the the show the plug was pulled on the show completely. They stopped filming. Dude, that that wasn't a blind item, but that might have been the biggest story that has been talked about on our podcast, um, uh, broken on our podcast. That was. Crazy, crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy. I was not expecting that. Um, yeah, I love talking to people that are the journalists that don't get the airtime, you know? Yeah. And it's just fun to hear what they have to say. And these are I got one for you then. Okay. We need to we need to talk Ryan Nauman. Because he's <laughs> in that same bucket of breaking some of the biggest stories in Hollywood, but do, people may not know his name right away because you read the story, but you don't always read the byline or know the credits. And Ryan Nauman also worked with us at TMZ for a very long time. He now heads up uh, Radar. And so he's a he's a really he's the editor. Is it man editor in chief of Radar? I believe is his actual title. Yeah, he's the, he's the head dude. Um, and he started off as an intern at TMZ. I was literally at his graduation from college at Cal State Fullerton. That's how long I've known this guy. Uh, but he has broken some of the biggest stories in the world for TMZ, for OK, for Radar, I, for The Blast. I mean, he's worked kind of everywhere. Um, and we talked to him about his connection with the bling ring. If you remember the Hollywood bling ring, which was going around robbing everyone, Ryan was like the inside guy that he admits that he was the one that Nick Prugo was talking about on the Bling Ring special. And uh, this is his recollection of what that was all like for him. Well, I always get mad that they never call me to be a part of these things. But what stories was breaking? Well, I was an intern and I became, I, uh, I think one of, Nick Prugo had gotten arrested already. And I just, I started working on it. I saw this photo of Nick Prugo out and with Tess Taylor and Drake Bell is like this infamous photo. And I reached out to Tess and Nick and um, we became friends over time. And yeah, I mean, I kind of was connected with the majority of the burglar bunch at one point or another. And they were just spilling everything that they did. <laughs> um, they were all trying to turn on each other. So they were all very uh, ready to spill any secrets on the other people. Um, we were breaking lots of stories about the items they stole. They were pretty dumb at like wearing the items out. So we would get Facebook photos of them wearing, you know, Lindsay Lohan's necklace or whatever. So they wait, were, were you, were you hmm. the media contact 
that was discussed during the Bling Ring documentary that they said they had a contact inside. Were, where? Were yeah. you the person? They said at TMZ or where? No, on yep. the uh, Netflix documentary. Did they say they had a contact at TMZ? They said they, they had a TMZ oh, contact. Yeah. That was definitely me then. Yeah, I didn't. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was our uh, our top moments of the Hollywood. No, 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 no. We have we have two more that must get in here, Adam. <laughs> okay. They must get in here. I can't let us go without talking about probably one of our, my personal favorite episodes that almost didn't happen, but one being Steve Honig, who is a crisis PR specialist that we landed on this interview and he has never done an interview with anyone else um, to this extent. And it was such a fascinating, it was like the perfect episode for us because when we talk about revealing the fourth wall, this episode, the whole thing was revealing the fourth wall of Hollywood. People who are in crisis mode, who hire, you know, Steve Honig to represent them, to help them get out of their shithole that they are currently in. We know that he has worked with a lot of big people. If you Google his name, he's been connected to Lindsay Lohan many times. Um, he obviously wouldn't talk about Lindsay that day. However, he talked about what, how he does what he does, why he does it, and how to get people out of the shit storm that they're in. It was such a good episode. Which do you think was the most exciting? You know what? I, I know a clip I want to do. Him talking about who he would absolutely never represent. I thought that was fascinating. Someone who lives in like people doing shitty stuff, but there's one person who was like, even I wouldn't represent him. So let's hear who that is. You specialize in obviously crisis PR. Kanye West is the one person who I feel like is dealing with a lot going on in the media, spiraling, having every story about him come out every single day. Would you take on Kanye as a client? You always save the best questions for last. <laughs> um, no is the answer to that question. Um, I think, you know, the issue there is that it's not a public relations problem. It's a behavior problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this to me was just a very, it was an interesting conversation for me because I've done like kind of PR stuff, but here's a guy mm -hmm. who's black belt in PR. So it was good for me to kind of learn about his vision of the industry, like what, how, to, how, what he thinks when he does PR and when he works with celebrities. So it was just, it was more, it, it was very educational for me in a way, because I want to get inside. Um, one other thing that he talked about, again, he does crisis PR and someone who needed crisis PR this past year was Alec Baldwin. And he talked oh, yeah. about what he would have done in, uh, if he was representing Alec Baldwin. What would you, what would you do in this situation if he hired you? I, I think, well, right now, Let's go back to when it first happened. I probably would have waited for more facts to come out and be disclosed before I would do any interviews. You know, I think a lot of people question why he did that big interview that he did. All right, Steve, love that interview. And this one is my last one that I want to put out there. And it was because... I love this interview so much, but we had Asia Scott on from Below Deck, and Asia had so much personality, so fun. I understand after this interview why she is such a fan favorite on that. I don't watch Below Deck. I'm sorry, guys. I may disappoint you. I'm not a big Below Deck person, um, but she came on. She blew our socks off. She clearly did not hold back from any of her answers just talking about everything but i i liked her stories about all the wild shit she's seen on yachts the crazy stuff rich people do not and these were not things that happened necessarily while below deck was filming but things that she's seen as a deck hand for her last decade in the industry and the story that was wild was this one about a father and a daughter and their weird I'll let her tell the story. I remember the first boat that I, <laughs> the first boat that I worked on, it was this really confusing dynamic where a father and his daughter came on and then her, her boyfriend came with her 
And I couldn't figure out what was going on because she kept sitting in one of their laps and then sitting in another lap. And it was just confusing. And anyway, they we, they all went to the front of the boat and they asked for some cocktails before they went to the bow and they were sunbathing on the bow. And I think they must have forgotten that they asked for them and they were pretty pissed. And we and I walked around the corner with this tray of cocktails and the biological father we looked into it, we checked, we looked at passports, we looked at records. The biological father had his head in between the daughter's legs, like put, about to pull her panties aside, kissing all in it. And I was just, oh, <gasps> I, oh, I know. Oh, 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 <laughs> I know. Yes, that was weird, but I thought this was even stranger. It was just about the weird fetishes on yachts. Again, rich people are they're crazy. I remember this Russian boat that my friend worked on. The father and the son both had a fetish for slamming chicks while they were on their period. And so what they used to do oh. is they would um, they would work with this agency and they would send them four prostitutes that all had their period at a different time of the month. So each week they'd go do like a month charter and each week they had a different girl that was bleeding that they both just fucked for that week. <laughs> oh, that is my. insane. Okay. That's... Never mind. I don't want to be. A no. Well, the thing is <laughs> yeah. weird. All right. That's it. I have officially we can now wrap up the best of 2022. Those are the best moments from our podcast over the last year. Some things in there. Um, I didn't know we'd be talking about this year. Some amazing stories that were revealed. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope that it inspires you that if you heard something on here and you want to go back and listen to the full episode, you now know that it exists or that uh, th there's just more to be heard because we have an incredible archive of some of the most amazing interviews and stories being revealed and just perspectives on Hollywood that you're not going to find at uh, on any other podcast out there. So. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Yeah, I hope you guys kind of go back to the archive. Not even for past of 2022. Like we've been doing this podcast for a while now, and there's some really good interviews that are they're they're timeless. It doesn't matter when you listen to it; you're gonna have something to take away from the interview. With that said, I hope you guys have a great holiday. Um, and our resolution is to go. Our resolution, I think, together is to to go to our iTunes page one day and to see all these <laughs> reviews from you guys. I don't know how that works, but that's our resolution. We want to go there and just see a bunch of reviews from from you guys. Yeah, leave a review, go to iTunes, Hollywood Raw, say a few kind of words. You guys know what to do. We said this before. Find us at, at Holly Raw Pod on Instagram. We're also on TikTok. We're on Facebook. We have this private Facebook group called Off the Record. We're going to answer a few questions. We'll let you in. And we'll see you guys in 2023. Woo! Bye! Happy New Year! Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best thing you do support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we, we need hair gel. <laughs>